And welcome to Gale Force Wins. This is our talent stream edition, where Jerry and I interview interesting and engaged people who will make a difference. We're certainly pleased to have Robert Houle on the conversation today. Hey, Rob, how are you? Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Good afternoon, uh, Al, Jerry. Uh, pleasure to spend time with you. Uh, a bit about me. Born and raised in uh, Newfoundland. Uh, started uh, my education there and um, big family, seven. Uh, we enjoyed uh, our time there for sure. Um, I uh, started with Memorial, uh, Memorial University, transferred to Concordia, uh, attained a commerce degree and uh, started a path, started upon a path that led me to the Navy. And, uh, you know, ever since I was a kid in Newfoundland, uh, much like yourselves, I mean, we're around the water. And I knew I enjoyed it. I didn't know all the reasons why. Um, but when the Navy was presented to me as an opportunity, it was fit. And it allowed me an opportunity to uh, basically live the life uh, in and around uh, the ocean. So I've, uh, I've made great uh, use of that. And uh, I've enjoyed the time that I've spent you know, serving Canadians and ultimately uh, representing uh, Canadians uh, during my time in command around the globe. So it's been uh, it's been an interesting and uh, varied career, but uh, one that I take great pride in. And uh, you know, I'm you know looking forward to what opportunities lay uh, lay ahead. You know, certainly here in 2021, it's interesting times, and you know, I think with the right mindset, you can pretty much make your own path. Yeah, that, so true, Rob. I mean, absolutely. 2021 is an interesting time right now. People are emerging out of the pandemic and looking at things a little differently, Like right? The future of work looks differently than it did even a year ago. You talked about a commerce degree now. So I, I'm assuming that you didn't follow that path of commerce into the Navy or did you? Or did you do any time in that, in that field? So um, I was at a point in my naval career where I was working part-time um, and I was finishing my university degree, um, like a lot of reservists. And at that moment, my career trajectory had me becoming a, a certified uh, public accountant and then ultimately pursuing the opportunities that were resident there. Um, so I finished my degree, I worked in industry uh, in the accounting industry with one of the big uh, five uh, accounting firms um, and got a great exposure to amazing clients, uh, some of the biggest clients that we had in Canada and certainly uh, internationally and the small ones as well. And what I learned through my time as an accountant is um, I really enjoyed dealing with the people, you know, developing a relationship with the clients in a meaningful way, not just to get the job done, but to, um, to really connect. You know, I find, you know, all of us uh, have, uh, you know, areas that we kind of gravitate towards. And mine is creating personal relationships and, you know, finding in that relationship what is most beneficial for, for all concerned. And, and I have a, a knack for that. And uh, I enjoyed that. And I realized after five years of accounting, I enjoyed that in the Navy as well. Wow. And, uh, and so I decided uh, that accounting was great. It's a great profession, but my path steered me back towards, uh, towards the Navy. And uh, so I finished up my accounting duties and went back to the Navy and uh, looked at the operational side. But I'll say this, Al, no matter where I go in the Navy, no matter what I do, I'm continually relying on those accounting skills. Because I was going to, I was going to say, Rob. Of course, right? Anybody that can handle a budget is certainly highly sought after. So that's great. So you go into the Navy. Now you've got this knack to build teams and stuff like that. Where does your career path take you in the Navy? Because I would imagine you need to have great team building skills if you're in the Navy. Well, certainly, uh, you you have to have the the aptitude to develop those skills, obviously. Uh, not everyone shows up with the same toolkit of skills. Um, and we all have something we can contribute to our Navy and our armed forces. And um, 
But as you progress and go through training, so my training started with a position as a deck officer on a ship. And essentially you're looking at the systems and people and teams and small boats that support the ship. And then as you go through your naval career, if you continue to show an aptitude there, then you can move into a navigational role. And that's one that I really, really enjoyed um, just because it was the focal point of the ship. Anyone wants to know what's happening, they ask the navigator, you know, because the navigator is ultimately the one putting the line on uh, the chart, uh, working with the command team, specifically the commanding officer, to come up with uh, the best plan that supports the orders we've been given for that mission. So, uh, and then so from there, after a, a navigation tour, I uh, went into the operations world. And because I was in a uh, coastal ship, my focus was mine warfare. And then I continue to progress through the ranks. I continue to demonstrate the, uh, the potential and capacity for uh, greater experiences. And uh, from there, I went to second in command. And, and Al, as you know well, the command selection process in the Canadian Navy, um, it did have a formal board process where you sat pretty much like as we are here in the same room and you're being evaluated by um, current commanding officers in the fleet and the deputy fleet commander. They essentially have a discussion as we are here, just where, where are your ideas? Where do you gather your inspiration? How do you think you will lead at sea? Because um, these are important things for, uh, for the Navy to understand who they're putting uh, in these positions and who they're entrusting with the responsibility of, uh, of you know, command at sea. So um, that's where my naval career, uh, seagoing career, you know, stopped with uh, a successful command of uh, HMCS Glace Bay and uh, Summerside. And then uh, I proceeded into more of the operation or the, sorry, the administrative slash operational roles in, uh, in the Canadian Force and after that. Rob, the, uh, the, you know, that's fascinating. Sitting there and you're in front of how many people when you're on the command board? Usually there's four people. Um, and essentially, if you've, uh, it's essentially an interview. You are putting your best foot forward Amazing. to show why you can be a member of that team. Yeah. Rob, you uh, fascinating, right? And it sounds like a great journey that you've had. You, you so casually flew over those, you know, you were building teams the whole way. I mean, the skills to motivate those people and, you know, the flexibility you have as you, as you, as you lead teams and stuff, that's really incredible. But I'd also like to focus on the fact that, you know, you worked in navigation and mine warfare, and those skills are constantly changing. That technology is constantly changing. You know, you must have a great appreciation for keeping up to date on those things as you were going through your career. Yes, uh, certainly anything today requires a connection and understanding of the changes in technology. And it's not just for the Navy, that is any organization that has any connection to technology, you're gonna to have to learn and grow with it. And yeah. um, I remember when I was going through training and yes, I guess I gave it a bit of a flyby as I went through these various positions. Um, each time I would either successfully pass a course and get ready for the next step, I would look at it and go, great, I've learned this, now I can take a break. Right. and focus on just doing the job and and this process would continue okay now i'll finish this training now i can take a break and do the job and um you know i learned a valuable lesson from my mother uh who at 50 was at university upgrading her education and um while she never was so direct to say you know do this and you will have an easier path learning through life what i got from her was exactly that and then once i applied that to the navy once i accepted that every day I get up and I'm willing to learn, then you're gonna have a day where you're gonna be able to put everything into what you're being asked or tasked to do. And once I got my mind around there, learning just became a part of how I prepared myself to be a naval professional. Um, and now as a, as a civilian in uh, the Department of National Defense, as a civilian professional, um, and I take that seriously. I just have this voracious appetite to, you know, what is the challenge? What are the challenges we're facing? You know, what's been done before? Yeah. What can we try now? Is there a new avenue that we can explore without really changing our core mandate here? And, and I just, that for me is sunrise. That gets me up, that gets me going. That allows me to, you know, either bring the team along or allow quiet reflection. Okay, 
These are some things that were done in the fourth before team. This is what I think we need to do because we haven't tried this. And let's see what we get. And I'm not at all uh, shy about looking what are other navies doing, what are other people doing? Because uh, you don't have to have the best idea to recognize it. And more importantly, try to find a way to employ it for your own uses. It, it speaks to open-mindedness, right? I mean, it's that ability to look at things differently and solve the problem, but look at it in, in different ways. It's quite a it's quite a tool to have in your toolbox and especially the tool of your appreciation for that lifelong learning. I think it's vital. And, and it's clear that you, you don't make it to where you, you've made it without a, a really, really strong worth ethic, work ethic to get there. Rob, I mean, the future's bright, right? There's a lot going on right now. A lot of, a lot of things moving in around the world. Where do you see yourself going? You know, what is it? I was, it, people have often described to me that when you do something you like, you get this really good feeling about it. What is that for you? What do you like to do and where do you see yourself going? I think I have to circle back to uh, something we started the conversation with and I really enjoy working with people um, and um, on tasks, small and large, uh, you know, obviously the team is scaled to, to manage each of those. Um, but that's what I enjoy is working with teams, looking at the challenge. So where do I see this going? Um, there's a lot of opportunity, as you say, um, particularly here in Atlantic Canada, we have a national shipbuilding program that is, you know, for, uh, pointing a direction for the Navy to regenerate and bring in new capability. You know, all the companies that are from Irving ISI that is building the ships to all the associated organizations they have contributing to that, all of those organizations have the same need for, you know, people that are willing to work in teams, people that can work independently, uh, people that can lead, follow, yeah. um, you know, certainly listen to direction. But, you know, in my case, what I bring to that, uh, uh, you know, as well is just the ability to connect some uncommon connections, some things that I find folks over miss. And it's just the way I've learned and, and grown that I have this unique ability to be able to connect seemingly um, non-connected uh, elements and come up with a piece of plan and say, okay, listen, I think if we, if we draw on this strength here, whether it be human resources, technical, and then we, you know, add either more time or change the task in this way, we're going to be able to achieve this goal pretty much consistently time and again, because, you know, doing one ofs is great, but as you know, uh, being a former Naval officer yourself, you need to be able to build a, uh, an approach that's repeatable. Right. Yeah. For me, it's you know, focusing on those, those, finite, uh, those finite pieces of any project and maximizing that to get a result. It's interesting, Rob, listening to you, you know, you're obviously incredibly articulate and that is really important for our good business communications. Teamwork, passion, you have a strong work ethic, uh, your critical thinking, uh, and then you package it together with good communications. Uh, I think, you know, you've got a very, very strong package uh, that I think, you know, the private sector or whatever organization is, is, would be interested in you would definitely get quite a package when it comes to you. And that's just in this very short time that I've gotten to listen to you talk. Well, uh, Rob, listen, buddy, thanks very much for taking the time to join us here on Talent Streams. There's no doubt about it that uh, you've had quite a career to date and you've got uh, a lot over the horizon yet to do. And your passion for working with people is inspirational. Thanks for joining Gale Force Winds and uh, we hope to get you back on the podcast soon. Gentlemen, I appreciate your time. And Jerry, thank you for those uh, kind words. I agree. So uh, gentlemen, have a great day and thank you very much for your time. You're up. What?